Community learning environments, kids and parents, co-construct meaning through book talks. The focus of this presentation is a three-year study of community-based literature discussion groups that involve parents, caregivers, and fourth and fifth grade children. The discussion excerpt that follows provides a glimpse of one discussion as participants engage in collaborative interpretation of a children's book as they met in their local library. The book was The Lotus Seed, a picture book about an extended Vietnamese family who emigrated to America. In this excerpt, participants discuss their own experiences and feelings about the theme being American. This discussion, in which parents, children, and facilitators constructed meeting together, illustrates the overall goals of the intergenerational program to encourage families to use books as a way to discuss big ideas, to introduce and reinforce the pleasures of engaged reading, and to encourage and support the development of a reading community, a central theme in this study, as well as the use of community libraries as sites for intergenerational book discussions. Our participants were upper elementary school children who have retained reading fluency and their parents or caregivers. The program is not a reading program to support children having difficulty reading, but rather a reading for pleasure program for both children and adults. Our families came from underserved communities in a northeastern state in the U.S. The state has diverse populations by culture, race, religion, and socioeconomic status. Typically, the discussion size ranged from 8 to 12 families. A librarian and a graduate or postgraduate student in the humanities facilitated discussions after a one-day training workshop. Facilitators planned and worked together to lead discussions featuring award-winning children's picture books and chapter books on themes relevant to active participation in society. These themes were being American, courage, and freedom. Targeted sites included two small cities, a suburb, a rural site, and a large urban area. Our conceptual frame included several questions. Why the literature group format? Research and practice validate the small group discussion model and the importance of personal transactions with a text. Discussion-based approaches to academic literacy content are strongly linked to student achievement. Book discussions or literature response groups enable readers of all ages to share in conversations about their reading, their interpretations and connections to ideas, larger questions in the story about the world. Why 9 to 11 year olds? Children of this age have reached the ability to evaluate the sense and reality of information. They're receptive to reading about humanity's issues and raising questions. Research shows that after age 8, children's reading for pleasure drops. While there's been a measurable progress in recent years in reading ability at the elementary school level, reading outside school appears to halt as children enter their teenage years. Additionally, children are often exposed to test-oriented reading curricula in school, curricula which does not foreground reading for pleasure. These trends result in a decline in comprehension, and for adults, an overall decline in civic and social in engagement. Why involve the parents? Parents' reading habits and attitudes toward reading have a major effect on their children's reading at the upper elementary level, and in terms of lifelong reading. Parent-child book discussions enable parents to share their knowledge about the world with their children, and parents reading and talking with children about a shared book gain insight into their children's reading processes, as well as their developing sense of human nature and historical understanding. Our data sources came from qualitative research methods and included field observation notes, audio and videotapes of the discussion, follow-up interviews, facilitators and participants' reflection on the ongoing experience by means of blogs and survey responses. We also used written questionnaires. Our analysis included data on themes, on the actions and interactions of intergenerational discussions, and the participants' responses to targeted books in the context of these themes. Active strategies and reflective practices practices of participants, and participants' reading and discussion habits outside the program. Our findings, particularly focused on 
building a literacy community. An unwritten program goal was to have families explore texts and view the world in new ways within a new community. We found that facilitators of successful sites presented the program as something that participants contributed to, rather than just something they showed up for. Participants usually did not know one another or the facilitators. Research indicates that there are important criteria for forming a community of learners. These are sharing responsibility for learning in a collaborative social context, a structure that encourages continuing conversations among individual voices, the development of trust, respect for and inclusion of families' funds of knowledge, and fostering a climate in which group members can use their life experiences in constructing meaning. Our participants built community through nurturing, sharing stories, if coming together to form guidelines, building trust, and embracing thoughtful disagreement. These are some of their successful strategies. Creating a nurturing environment often meant sharing food. Sometimes this was pizza or sandwiches served before the discussion as parents chatted. Other groups prepared food that focused on a particular group to create a sense of the story. For example, Peter Rabbit. One site went with a picnic theme with check tablecloths and homemade carrot bread. In the year of the boar and Jackie Robinson, often elicited sites serving Chinese food and having artifacts that related to the themes of the book. Sharing stories was another strategy. Some sites began with name games or asked children and parents to share something about their heritage. Generating group guidelines for discussion sessions was another important strategy to ensure that both children and parents talked equally. Working together to formulate rules contributed to that feeling of a shared community. Sharing perspectives and viewpoints is essential in rich, layered intertextual discussions. Our data indicate that, the, that these interactions ha did happen. The depth of parents' experiences, children's questions, enabled readers to examine several points of view. Brian Collier's use of color in Martin's Big Words, whether or not Ruby Bridges was a hero in the story of Ruby Bridges. Embracing thoughtful disagreement is another important component. The children's literature read in these sessions was often provocative, and the use of literature-based icebreakers and activities designed to lead into the discussions encouraged a sense of shared community and trust. The story of Ruby Bridges, the friendship, and Martin's big words, La Mère Posa, elicited creative strategies on the part of the librarian scholar teams to help, as one facilitator put it, come up with ways to bridge the gap of different opinions and experiences. These are some examples from our discussion data, which indicates this. Family reading and discussion evolved with an impact on reading at home. Data from our follow-up interviews and survey responses showed that both parents and child participants felt that the program had impacted on their family reading. These are some representative responses. Creating community is a reflective process. Facilitators continually engaged in reflection about the group process at the end of each session and thought about what was coming up next. These are some of the comments from our blogs. What are the implications of the study? The themes and practices that emerged from our data and that are described here suggest an alternative to the often constrained models for teaching and experiencing reading in elementary school classrooms. Here, students had a chance to share their experiences with their parents, and many, many personal experiences caused the discussion to move on to higher levels. The importance of building a nurturing and inclusive reading community was really an important finding, with relevance to those who work with children in books, both in classrooms and outside of schools. Sites that provide alternative approaches to reading and responding to exemplary literature that relate to issues like family, community, and global issues may provide a productive model for further observation and research. Our work also offers a framework for fostering school community partnerships. Our bibliography follows.